Bernard was born to an aristocratic family in Burgundy, now France, around 1090. He was given a religious education with a special interest in literature and rhetoric. Bernard's faith was based on a personally held faith rather than the rational approach used by the scholastics. After his mother died, he and his companions joined the newly formed Order of Cistercians near Dijon in 1113. After three years, Bernard was sent with some companions to found a new monastery of Clairvaux, where he became the abbot. The congregation began to grow so large that new monasteries were founded throughout Europe. Bernard was very influential in supporting Pope Innocent II against the anti-Pope Anacletus II and in denouncing the heresies of Abelard and the Cathars. He was also known for his preaching of the failed Second Crusade. He died in 1153 at Clairvaux and was canonized in 1174. He was named a doctor of the church in 1830 for his erudition and Mariology. Of what will you deem yourself worthy, who, being made in the image of your Creator, do not guard the dignity of so great a majesty? And being a man, but not understanding your honor, are compared to the foolish beasts, and made like them. Seeing that in truth, you labor at nothing of a spiritual or eternal nature, but like the spirit of a beast, which as soon as it is loose from the body, is dissolved with the body, you have been content to think of nothing but material and temporal goods, turning a deaf ear to the gospel precept. Labor not for the food that perishes, but for that food which endures unto everlasting life. Letter 48 to Walter de Chamont In the third evil case, however, man sins not in ignorance but deliberately, usurping the glory which belongs to God. And this arrogance is a more grievous and deadly fault than the ignorance of the second, since it disdains God, while the other knows him not. Ignorance is brutal, arrogance is devilish. Pride only, the chief of all iniquities, can make us treat gifts as if they were rightful attributes of our nature, and while receiving benefits, rob our benefactor of his due glory. On Loving God, Chapter 2 as a drop of water, poured into wine, loses itself, and takes the color and savor of wine. Or as a bar of iron, heated red-hot, becomes like fire itself, forgetting its own nature. Or as the air, radiant with sunbeams, seems not so much to be illuminated, as to be light itself. So in the saints, all human affections melt away by some unspeakable transmutation into the will of God. On loving God, Chapter 10 From this it follows, that you are obliged to do all in your power, that unbelievers may be converted to the faith, that they may not fall away after conversion, and that they who have lapsed may return. Let them that have gone astray, be brought back to the right road. Let them that have been perverted, be restored to truth. And let the seducers be confounded with invincible arguments, so that they may correct themselves, if that is possible. Otherwise, let them be deprived of all authority, and thereby of the power to lead others astray. Your zeal must by no means refuse to occupy itself, even with that class of the unwise which is the worst of all. I mean heretics and schismatics, who are perverted themselves and the perverters of others, who rend and tear like dogs, and deceive like foxes. These, I say, ought particularly to engage your attention, so that they may either be converted and saved, or at least prevented from propagating their errors. On Consideration, Book 3, Chapter 1, The Papacy, A Stewardship And the angel answering said to her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon you, and the power of the Most High shall overshadow you. It has been said before, that she was full of grace. How is it now said? The Holy Ghost shall come upon you, and the power of the Most High shall overshadow you. Could she be filled with grace and not possess the Holy Spirit, the giver of all grace? And if he is already in her, how is it promised that he shall come upon her in some new way? Was it not to explain this to us, that the angel said not merely, In you, but also, upon you? For the Holy Spirit was in her, before his coming by an abundant grace. Now it is declared that he will come upon her, by the fullness of the more abundant grace, 
which he will pour out upon her. But how will she be able to receive a fresh infusion of divine grace, when she is already full of grace? And if she can receive more, how are we to understand that she is already full of grace? Was it that, before, grace had only filled her mind and soul, and that the new infusion of it was to penetrate her body, so that the plenitude of the divinity, which had hitherto dwelt in her spiritually, as he dwells in many of the saints, might begin to abide in her corporally, as he has never dwelt in any other saint. Sermons on the Missus Est, Homily 4 They have placed you in dark places, like the dead of this world. And now it is a matter of little surprise, that you are descending into the belly of hell, which is hastening to swallow you up, and to give you over as a prey, to be devoured by those who roar in their hunger. Letter to Geoffrey of Lisieux